。哎，大家好，呃，我是劳博士哈，今天给大家分享一下，啊、呃，美国俏护士教大家如何防治呃新呃新冠肺炎哈。希望大家喜欢。Serious, this is not a drill. You do not need a ten-year supply of toilet paper. Should I be wearing a mask? 
I'm not trying to scare you with this information. I'm just trying to put it out there so that you can inform yourself and take appropriate actions. And so jumping into the happier part of the video, we're going to talk about what you can do to protect yourself from coronavirus, how you can protect yourself, your loved ones, your communities, and things like that. Because there's a lot of things that you can do super simply that are gonna make all the difference. So the number one most important thing that you can do is to practice good hand hygiene. If you know any healthcare provider, hand hygiene is like the holy grail. It is something that we swear by. When I say good hand hygiene, that means that you are washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds with the proper technique. Yes, there is actually a right and wrong way to wash your hands. I'm going to pop a video in the description box that's going to teach you how to wash your hands in case you don't know. And it's totally okay not to know. I didn't know until I became a nurse either. If you don't have access to soap and water, making sure that you are using hand sanitizer that has at least 60% alcohol content is incredibly important. I know all the stores are out of hand sanitizer and soap. And so if you don't have any, please make sure to phone a friend, ask a neighbor, whatever it is so that you can practice good hand hygiene. So just want to put it out there that we are lucky that our country's infrastructure is still in place. Our sewage system is still working. The water is still working. And so I don't know why there is suddenly a nationwide shortage of toilet paper. It's great to have some on hand, but you do not need a 10 year supply of toilet paper. I promise you, you will be okay. Please, please, please just consider the quantities of the items that you are buying. It's great to have a two week supply of things on hand and I'm not going to lie, I have that for myself. I also want to make sure that I'm prepared in case anything happens. But please think about the elderly couples, the families with young kids, all the people who really cannot be leaving the house because they are extremely vulnerable at this time. Other than that, I can't emphasize this enough. You want to avoid touching your face if you do not have clean hands. If you touch something that is contaminated and then you go ahead and scratch your face or touch your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, it is possible that the virus is going to be transmitted to you. So please do your best not to touch your face. I never realized how much I was touching my face until I started working in the hospital. Number three, wipe down and clean your phone screens frequently. I know I am addicted to my phone. I'm taking it with me everywhere, to the bathroom, when I go outside, whatever. Make sure that you are wiping it down frequently because you know, as you are setting your phone down on different surfaces, it can also get contaminated. And so you just want to make sure that you are not putting yourself at risk. And now we are going to talk about this wonderful concept called social distancing. If you have been living under a rock and you haven't seen it plastered all over the media and all over social media, then let's talk about it because this is going to make such a big difference. So as you guys know, schools across the nation have been canceled. People are encouraged to work from home. Events, Coachella is canceled. All these big gatherings of people are canceled and why? So the fact is coronavirus is in your community. You know someone or you know someone who knows someone who has coronavirus or will get coronavirus. It is already here in our communities. That is just a fact. What can we do now? What can we do to minimize the impact of coronavirus? And so you might have heard of this concept of flattening the curve. And so again, lots of charts in this video, but I'm gonna throw this next chart up. What it means to flatten the curve is that within the United States, there is a certain number of hospital beds. There are a certain number of intensive care unit beds. There are a certain number of ventilators or breathing machines that patients can use and a limited number of nurses, of doctors, of people who can take care of the people who are sick. And as you can see in the middle, there is a line for what the capacity is. If everybody gets sick with coronavirus at the same time, this is extremely dangerous because we're not going to have enough resources. We physically do not have enough manpower, enough hospital beds to take care of the people who are sick. But if you do your part to socially distance, to isolate yourself from other people, to avoid large crowds, to stay in your home, then you can actually flatten the curve. So yes, 
coronavirus will still be transmitted. People will still get infected by coronavirus, but because we are spreading out the number of people who are sick at a given time, our hospitals will have enough staff and have enough resources to take care of people when they are sick, because time and time again, we have seen that people can recover from coronavirus, given that they are given the proper care and have the proper resources. Right now, Italy is stuck in a horrible situation where everybody is getting sick at the same time and physicians and doctors are literally having to choose who to save and it's not a situation that we all want to be stuck in. I know that it's super exciting to be able to work from home or that you know now you finally have time off from school, but please, please, please do not use this time to go out. I'm seeing so many people go to the bars, to go to the clubs, but hear me out on this. You might be young, you might be healthy, and you might be thinking, hey, even if I went out and I got this virus, it probably wouldn't kill me. First of all, that is not true. There are young people who have gotten coronavirus who have passed away, so that's already not true. And number two, even if you're young and healthy, you can go outside, get this virus, be asymptomatic, and go home and transmit it to someone that you love. Do you have a parent? Do you have a grandparent? Is there somebody that you love? Are there young kids in your family? Would you be okay living with the fact that you brought this virus to them and they died? If the answer is no, then please do your part and stay home. Stay home. Now is not the time for your fun nights out. There's going to be plenty of time for that in the future. Just right now is not the time, I promise you. And again, I'm not saying this to scare you. It's just incredibly important that we put it into perspective. More in depth of what social distancing actually means. You're going to avoid large gatherings so that you're not going to go out unless you have a necessary reason to go out. So for example, you are completely out of groceries and you need food for your family with caution, definitely go to the grocery store and get the essentials that you need. And finally, the last topic that I want to talk about here today is, do I need a mask? Because I understand it is so scary going outside right now, not knowing who or what could have coronavirus. But current recommendation by the CDC is that unless you are sick, you should not be wearing a mask. And I know that might sound alarming or wrong, but let me explain why to you. The thing about the mask is, first of all, it needs to be used properly in order to protect you from the virus. And so if you are using it incorrectly, you might be falsely believing that the mask is protecting you when it in fact is not. Number two, when you wear a mask, you tend to touch your face a lot more often because you have to adjust the mask, you have to make sure that it fits right. And so what you're doing is actually you're outside you are touching surfaces that are contaminated and bringing that to your face, right to your airways, to your nose and your mouth, which can be extremely dangerous. Number three, please do not hoard face masks. Do not buy face masks unless you are sick, unless you seriously need them. There is a nationwide shortage of face masks. There are nurses who are required to use the same face masks for the entire week of their shifts. There are not enough masks for everyone to go around. There are some healthcare providers who do not have PPE, personal protective equipment that they need in order to take care of patients adequately. This is really, really serious. Please save the face masks for the people who actually need them, which are our frontline healthcare workers, our nurses, our doctors, our RTs. Um, everyone who is interacting with these patients so that we can keep them safe. If in a panic you bought a bunch of face masks, don't worry, but you can consider contacting your local clinics, your urgent cares, hospitals to see if you might be able to donate those supplies because they really, really are needed. I promise you, I am not making up this information. We have an incredibly long journey ahead of us and it's incredibly important that we take care of our healthcare professionals because we are going to seriously need their help. I know this video is a lot less fun, a lot less exciting, and it probably sounds like I was lecturing you for 10 minutes. I sincerely apologize, but I hope that you found it in the least bit helpful. I know there must be a ton of questions and things that I left unanswered. I could probably talk about this topic for hours or probably honestly days. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Right now, it is more important than ever to be kind to one another, to help out your neighbors, to be really conscious about the decisions that you are making because 
they are not only affecting you as an individual, but your community, the people around you, the people you love. And so please, please, please be extremely mindful. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a big thumbs up. That would mean the world to me. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss the next coronavirus video update. And as always, today is a great day to have a great day. You are a 10 out of 10. Don't ever forget that. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Could swear it's been 700 degrees in here